Hey there, everybody. I want to tell you about a very special live show that's happening in Los Angeles the first weekend of December. Eben and I are doing our first ever all music show, and it's for a couple of good causes. If you will be in Los Angeles on Saturday, December 3rd, or Sunday, December 4th, come see Paul F. Tompkins Hogs the Covers live at Largo. Eben and I have been collaborators for about 20 years, and we've done a lot of cover songs on our various shows, and we've always loved doing imaginative arrangements of beloved songs. And this show will be fun, featuring songs old and new with Amy Mann, Open Mike Eagle, and Ted Leo, plus surprise guests each night. And all proceeds from tickets and merchandise will benefit Planned Parenthood and the American Civil Liberties Union. Now, the shows will be only very slightly different from one night to the next. Don't feel like you have to go to both. But if you are that kind of completionist, I understand and I pity you. And don't worry, we are recording the shows as an album and all sales will be an ongoing donation to these and other worthy organizations. Get your tickets and additional info at paulftompkins.com slash live. Welcome. Welcome to all of you. Every single person who feels they need to be welcomed, you are by me, the welcome wagon. Was that a thing? Let's discuss it. Maybe there was a time in our nation's history or our world's history, don't mean to exclude other nations who might have this expression, I doubt that they do, when there was a wagon, a big wagon, I'm assuming, that everyone would pile onto the entire town and they'd welcome someone who was coming to their town. You had to tell them in advance, hey, I'm coming to your town. I tell you what, I wouldn't mind if everyone piled onto a wagon to welcome me. Now, is this just to welcome people to a town or was it also to respond to them saying thank you? Oh, it's turning into a hassle now. Oh, thank you very much. Ugh. Get the wagon. Everyone. Then they get on the wagon. There's like a, okay, three, two, one. You're welcome. And someone's always late and they do it on purpose. There's always someone who's going to lag behind. And they're going to be like, I'm going to say you're welcome. I got a split second afterwards. You hear me? This kind of behavior, guys, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like when someone wants to be the last to clap. <laughs> Although, I will admit, I have done that. I have, I have clapped till my hands were bloody and raw <laughs> to make sure I was the last one clapping. And let me tell you, what, by the time my hands are bloody and raw, that clapping sounds disgusting. It's gross. And people are mad at me. A lot of people are mad at me right now. Look, I, I just tell it like it is. And some people can't handle that. People are too politically correct. You know what? If I see a fat person, I say, hey, you're fat. Mm. I'm yelling across the street. Hey, fatso. Sorry if this is politically incorrect, but I think you're fat. <laughs> see, in modern society, people will tell you, oh, uh, it's not, uh, we don't think it's politically correct to yell across the street at a stranger that they're fat. Well, I like to think of a simpler time in America when you could call people fat left and right, <laughs> just all over the place. If you saw a fat person, you called them fat. Mm -hmm. Saw an ugly person, you say, you're ugly. Now, we're supposed to keep our th negative thoughts to ourselves? You can't express every single thing that you're feeling because of politeness? Hey, let me tell you something. If Abraham Lincoln was polite, he wouldn't have freed the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> he would have said, oh, I respect your choices. That's a good point. Thank you. More on that voice later. <laughs> Guys, all I'm saying is we're in trouble. Now, at the time that you're hearing this, a major political event will have already happened in this country. I don't know what the outcome will be, but I can tell you right now from my vantage point here, before that time, I'm terrified. 
I'm very scared. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. I'm sorry, but... Someone in the room was going to adjust the volume on their headset in a very ginger, hesitant manner. And so I reached my hands forward as well. And then I think that person took that as a sign that they were not allowed to do that, which of course they are. I would invite the person to adjust their volume. Okay. And it is all. Then, after the conversation, I invite some improviser pals onto the program, and we do a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected seats. The volume. Apparently, it's not quite right yet. <laughs> oh, she got it. Okay. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he sounds like. Ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to invite this gentleman onto the program. Uh, you will recognize him f- most assuredly from The Office, colon, an American workplace. In addition to millions of other projects, please welcome to the show, Oscar Nunez! Hi. Oscar, thank you for being Hi, here. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. L- applause. This, not, this rarely happens. Bloody, moist <laughs> applause. Moist. Like a seal. Moist. That's right. A happy seal who's caught her dinner. Their applause is very damp, isn't it? It seals. is damp. Boy, that, you, where, where, was that at Hamilton? Where did you clap so? It was at Hamilton. I had, I said, look, I spent my $3,000. I will be the last person to clap. You'll hear me clap. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oscar, Paul, I have a question for you. 17. Mm, I have an additional question. Follow up. <laughs> this is a question uh, for you submitted by our previous episode's guest. Are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? I don't know. How do we, how do, how do we play this? I'll take three questions. I don't know. Let's let's take the questions one at a time. Okay. Are you curious as to the identity of our Do I know this person? Yes. That, pr- that's what I'm asking. Are you curious to know who it is? Can I make a phone call? <laughs> Usually I don't do people, these. I don't do these things. Usually don't people know, don't panic this okay. fast. All right. Let me know who it is. Let me know who it is. Well, if you are curious as to the identity <laughs> of our curious. previous episode's guest, I would direct you and the listener to the Spontaneous Nation archives at howl.fm for a very modest fee. Hours of listening pleasure await you. That's that out of the way. <laughs> now, Oscar, I have a, a final question for you. Okay. All right. This question comes to us from our previous episode's guest, and that question is, why do you care about God? So they're assuming that I... They're making a lot of assumptions. They're making a lot of assumptions. A lot of assumptions. Yeah. I care about him because I think he's in big trouble. <laughs> What's with that guy? Is he, love me or I'll punish you. Do I want to even know you? <laughs> so when I die, I'm going to go live in your big house? What? Exactly. After you put us through these mind games? What's your deal? Yes. The, the mysteries of him are above you. Don't, that's because I'm Catholic. I'm, he don't try to get into his head. Right. That's what I tell my three-year-old when I put her in a box and I'm like, find your way out. I love you. Please me. Don't eat the apple. No. I, I don't know. Oscar, are you confessing to child abuse right now that you put your child in a box? I, if, if God loves us, then yes, I am <laughs> abusing my child. So now you were, you were raised Catholic? Yes, sir. Do you still consider yourself self a Catholic? No, but it's hard to get that out. You can't wash it out. You can't shampoo, rinse, repeat. Oh, I also was raised Catholic, and yeah. it's, it's very much— It's very it's, much. It's ingrained, yeah, it's for sure. It's a good basis. It's a good foundation. Yeah. And then you grow up, and you you know, you know decide what you, what you need to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a relationship with a god of some kind? Not really. It's more the concept of love and treating other people the way I, you know, I want to be treated. It's a very right. simple. It's a Hell's Angels rules. <laughs> right? What are the hell's? What's the hell's angel? If someone treats you bad, you treat them twice as bad. If someone treats you good, you treat them twice as good as what they treated you. I which did. is kind of like the samurai code, either. So, I did not know this yeah. about the hell's angels. Yeah. It's not really that. I don't really treat people double bad if right. they like a half as bad as they treated. Like you. if you were at a concert and you were working security and someone was uh, acting up, you'd stab them, of course. <laughs> With a pull, not with a pull stick. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you'd run them through with a pull cue. I'll uh, 
Monterey. But is that right. where it happened? Altamont. Altamont. I knew you would know. I wouldn't be surprised if someone was murdered in Monterey as well. The Monterey Pop Festival. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't say Napa Valley. I'm so far removed. The office has been very good to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And you, and from my high atop the world in your bubble, so far you look down. Yeah, right. of course. But I imagine how people live. I can't, I don't even, I can't even relate. <laughs> how old were you when your views on religion changed? I, uh, probably high school okay. or before that, seventh and eighth grade. It's their own fault. The Jesuit brothers are very smart and they encourage you to question and, and they lose a lot of people that way, but they, they're, they're cool. They're like, you know, we get it. It's almost like the, the, the rumspringa that the Amish have where they're yes. like, Hey, go out, experience the world. And if you come back, great. If you don't, you're shunned forever. Yeah, you're shunned forever. Yeah. 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 So uh, as a result of this, like, the, do you – who was like a, a, a teacher that you had that uh, kind of opened your eyes to other belief systems? I think his name was – I think he was a brother, Brother John, just the questioning of – they would say the Bible's not literal. Mm -hmm. They had to because we were smart kids. Right. So they're like, it's not literal. It, Noah's Ark, it, there was a flood. They said the earth was covered, but they saw the water at the horizon as far as they could see. So they thought, and that way they have wiggle room. Because, <laughs> right. you know, because you're like, well, this is mythology. Right. And they're like, well, yes, no, we don't know. And here's what these stories are meant to teach us. Yes. They're fables and they're, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so were you exploring other belief systems? At that age, were you were you looking into, you know, Buddhism or Judaism or whatever? No, I bought. I was I was a messenger in New York when I was seventeen. I would run. I I went into the Scientology place, and uh, like looked around there for a while. And I bought a book, the Bhagavad Gita, off, mm -hmm. off some guy who looked like a junkie. He was in the street, but he was Harry Krishna. Now in hindsight, right. but he was very spacey, man. And hey, man, and. I'm ashamed to say it. I think I was 17 and impressionable, and he was cool, and we were talking. And I think I and I started out donating five dollars, and by the time I left with the book, he had gotten 15 out of me. Because <laughs> like, whatever you want to give, man, five or more or more, man, it's right. cool. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> and I kept, and then, but I got the book, and I took the Bhagavad Gita home, and I read through it, and uh, and I'm like, well, that's something else. It's Right? The incarnations and all that. I remember my aunt looking at it. She's like, ay, Dios mío. Because <laughs> she saw it because she's very. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, you know, and so I'm curious about religions, but I I, uh, I think they all have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, there's, there's, there's definitely a trade-off where it's like, here's a philosophy of life. That is very simple and is pretty much the golden rule. You know, you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There's also some other stuff we would like you to Why believe. add that? I think yeah. <laughs> why? Why add? Buddhism, I think, is pretty cool. I right. think that's the one that's pretty. In, I, I, over, I would like to fold Judaism and, and Buddhism together. Mm -hmm. I've always felt very Jewish. <laughs> Grew up in New York City. Uh huh. I don't know. And a friend of mine told me, this guy, Neil – who works for, he worked for Shoah. Now he mm. lives in France. His wife is a rabbi. He's a friend of a friend. He's a friend of the guy who married my wife and I, Eric Geller. You all know Eric. And, <laughs> and Neil's a bit of a scholar. And he's like, oh, Oscar, Nunez is a big converso name in Spain. In the, when the Spanish Inquisition were coming down and they're like, oh, Jews out of Spain. A, a lot of Jews were named Nunez. And they said, oh, no, we're Catholic. And they, they said they... But it was no. That's an original Jewish name. He tells me. I'm like, I don't. I don't know. What <laughs> we're talking 1492 around then. <laughs> sure. So I don't know. And I like the bagel and I like the shtick. I like the timing. <laughs> I like, the, like you I know. Like the I, bagel I, I, and I like the shtick. I get the rhythm. I, you know. I I feel very much that way. And the <laughs> sure. older I get, the more I like. So uh, so that with Buddhism, uh, bu Buddhism, I would like to <laughs> make it Buddhism. <laughs> Buddhism, right? <laughs> that's right. Make it Buddhism. <laughs> Like a thing. Uh, you said you were a bike messenger when you were, or just a messenger? Walking. A walking messenger. They couldn't really? track you. You'd, you'd pocket the petty cash and you'd walk. <laughs> so you'd make like 20 bucks extra that day. We're talking <laughs> 1976, 77. Absolutely. That's when you went to concerts with your friend. And if you lost them, you'd see them the next day because you couldn't get in touch. <laughs> right? There's no cell phones. That's right. You're done. That's right. Yeah. So you were, had you, were you born and raised in New York or you just moved to New York? 
born in Cuba, raised in New Jersey. Okay. And so I was always in New York since 16, 17. Right. Uh, and not the year, the age, 16 <laughs> or 17. For the listener, Mr. Nunez is not an immortal. Um, <laughs> So was this, uh, did you move into the city or you were still living in Jersey working still in Still living in Jersey. Okay. Still living in Jersey. But yes. very enamored of the big city. Very enamored of the Big Apple. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. And so who who were you delivering messages to and from? They'd give you, mess- they'd give you envelopes and you'd take it to- eight- Oscar, who's they? Carl Boyer and Associates. It was a PR firm on, 40, on 42nd Street on 2nd Avenue, right by the Daily, the, the, the daily News, the plan. The, <laughs> Uh, this is a long time ago, but on 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street, that's where the office was. Right. Then we moved later on to, like, Madison or something. But we started there. I like you say we that you still have pride in the company. Yeah. <laughs> I, started, I, started I don't know what we delivered. It was paper. It was paper back. There was papers. Just envelopes? And you would have no idea what was in them? Uh, publicity stuff, paper. I didn't ever right. open the uh, – sometimes there were manila envelopes. Sometimes there were regular envelopes. Right. And to whom were you delivering these? Other companies, banks, uh, magazines. I would imagine. I don't know. Corp- businesses, corporations, right. other bi- skyscrapers, other buildings. Yeah. Yeah. I know the city like the back of my hand. I'd walk, you'd walk everywhere. Yeah. I, that job uh, 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 collapsed my arches. Really? Because I wore Converse, Chuck Taylors. Oh, and no. And my feet were perfectly fine when I started. And two oh, years no. later, I'm like, my feet hurt. And I went to the doctor. He's like, your arches are collapsed. Because oh. Converse are, they have some. The, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, what, do you do you wear orthotics to this day? No, I did for a while. And I threw them away. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Um, so, when did you did you eventually move into the city? I lived in Queens in Sunnyside. Okay. And that's as close as I lived in. I never lived in Manhattan. I want to. Maybe one day I will. Right. I have always wanted to live in Manhattan. Right. Yeah. So you would go into as a, did you get your start acting in New York? Yes. And so you'd, you'd go from Queens to, uh, to the city to, to, were you doing plays or were you just auditioning for television and film? No, I was a dental technologist. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, I don't want to be a dental technologist. I was like yeah. a year, I'm looking through here cause I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to tie this in. I was a dental technologist and I'm like, and they're like, you graduated and go get a job. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I got a job and I'm in a laboratory in a lab coat, like making porcelain teeth. And yeah. I'm like, how did this happen? This is, <laughs> now this is for real. I'm like 23. I'm like, this is real life now. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I really don't want to. So then I'm like, well, what do you really want to do? And the high school I went to, if I would have said to my friends, I'm joining the drama club, you'd find me in a garbage can, like <laughs> with my feet sticking out. Right? It, we didn't do that. Right. Again, I make it sound like it's West Side Story, like 50, like nights, like I grew up. But it was there were it was a tough crowd, you know. Yeah. So, but I'm like, I want to do, I want to do comedy, not so much stand up. I want to do sketch comedy. Right. I want to do improv comedy. Right. Because now I'm I'm th- I may be the oldest one here. I've reckoned. I'm because people say, "How did you get in comedy?" And the 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 truth of it is, the first time that I said, "Aha." was Harvey Corman watching the Carol Burnett show, mm-hmm. watching the Carol Burnett show, and with my dad, and mm-hmm. Harvey Corman would do one bit in particular. They would be, they would be doing a thing. Mm-hmm. They'd be doing a, like, a, like a bad sketch thing, and then he would make an entrance, and the audience would clap, mm-hmm. and he would like do this thing where he would like stop hesitant and look at the audience and then break the fourth wall. <laughs> and you remember that? And he would bow and then they were waiting for me. He would bow and my dad would lose it and I would lose it because my dad would lose it. And, yeah. and I got, I'm like, oh, he's breaking the fourth wall. And my father would be like, look, how can he do it? They are waiting for him. Son of a bitch. You can't do that. Oh, look at him. And he go and he look and he go and he bow. No, Oscar. He can't do that. They are waiting for him. A oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. And he would lose it. And I'm like, oh my God. And Harvey Corn would bow. And, and they're waiting. So, and I was like, that's, I want to do that. That's Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so. So I auditioned for some, I, I went to some classes. I was taking drama. I took drama. Mm-hmm. But I auditioned for a thing called Shock of the Funny, which was an improv troupe. I think this might have been the mid-80s. or early. And it was on St. Mark's Place between First Avenue and Avenue A. Mm-hmm. And it was, the stage was the size of this table. <laughs> and it was downstairs. And it was on, yeah, between First Avenue and Avenue A. 
And I was just back for Comic-Con like mm-hmm. this weekend and I walked by there and it's still there and I took a picture of me outside. Oh, it looks fantastic. like a like a place where junkies would go to to <laughs> but anyway, to do their junk. To do their junk. So yeah, so Manhattan I, is very near and dear to my heart. I also did theater for the New City, which was on Second Avenue and Tenth Street. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but this this look at that. Look at that. It looks like those go. are stairs that go downstairs under Saint Mark's. Yeah, and I went down there and I'm like, you guys, and they're like co- collecting tickets. I'm like, are you guys still doing theater here? He's like, yeah, dude, we are. So that is, will you send me that picture so we yeah. can put it on the yeah. the website the the page for this episode? Yeah. So anyway, uh, I started doing improv uh, back then. Right. What was the last? What was your last day of of being a dental technician? Did you when you knew how long did you did you like quit? Then and there, or was it? Did you give notice? I quit pretty soon afterwards. Right, and and I got a, a really. I love retail, and I love uh, New York City, and I got a job at uh, retail uh, at Bloomingdale's, the original <laughs> Bloomingdale's. Right. I loved it on third, uh, and then I would do Shock of the Funny at night. Wow, yeah. What were you selling at Bloomingdale's? I started out in customer service, which I loved. I loved, and I really, did, yeah, I did so well there that I got promoted. I didn't want to. I should have taken. I should have stayed there. What customer service was? People coming up and saying, were they complaining? Were they asking yeah, for but, directions? But what the policy, they? both. But the policy at Bloomingdale's is you take everything back. So what is your job? I, I'm a people pleaser, so I'm like, oh yes. I gave them back, to, and people were like, he's great. And then like, <laughs> then they they put me in flatware, which is like silverware and stuff. And that I, I I was okay there, but I got to meet Mary Tyler Moore there. And was she so, buying some flatware? She bought some flatware, and all the we lost our minds. The sale people lost their minds, <laughs> and she was there, and we're all crowded around her. And then this little uh, Puerto Rican guy, Bill, little bald guy, and we're like, uh, we're there, and everyone's flirting with her and crazy. And then she leaves, and we're like, ah ha ha. And Bill's like, she's got my pen. She's got my pen, my pen, my fountain pen. And we're like, Bill, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we chased her and we're like, Mary Tyler Moore. And then we made her look through her purse. And, and it turned out he had his pen. And then we're like, we're sorry. And she's like, dear God, just let me out of the store. It was ridiculous. But we got nervous and I guess he got flustered. <laughs> it sounds that way. Yeah. Oscar Nunez, where can people find you online should they wish to find I you? I wish they wouldn't. I, this is enough. <laughs> You, Fair enough. You, you lured me out. Fair enough. We have. Uh, do we? Pl- you're plugging later, right? The shows and all that stuff. Yeah, but whatever you want. This this will be uh, this, people, this will be available to people. I think the the second or third week of November. Oh, it'll be canceled by then. <laughs> we. I. There's a show called People of Earth. It's premiering on TBS on Halloween night. Oh, there we go. There you go. Just like Orson Welles' famous broadcast, The War of the Worlds. Are people going to watch your show and then go out and shoot water towers? Do you think? Why? <laughs> it's just a thing that happens with broadcasts on Halloween. Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Oh, right, because it's Halloween. <laughs> yeah, because it's Halloween. <laughs> Oscar Nunez, thank you for being here. Thank you. Is that it? We're I- go- that is it. Hold on a second. Jeez. <laughs> We're going to take a break. During the break, uh, we will get uh, uh, a, lo- a suggestion for our location for our improv from Oscar Nunez. And then when we come back from this break, we will meet our improvisers. Stay tuned, everybody, if you are tuning this in on your phone. Guys, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite musicians, Mike Doty. Here's some copy, and then I'm going to speak off the dome. Mike Doty, the former frontman of Soul Coughing, is obsessively, constantly driven to sound new. His album, The Heart Watches While the Brain Burns, is one of his best. It's a record of songs that turn on a dime from lonesome to surreal and back again. The record is Doty's third collaboration with Queens, New York hip-hop producer Good Goose. The two collaborated long distance after Doty left behind his longtime New York City base for the fascinating, mysterious town of Memphis, Tennessee. Influences for the tracks vary wildly, and not just because Good Goose is generally a hip-hop guy. Doty says he was going through this kind of unexpected heartland rock phase. Like the song Brian comes from a beat called the Guayla. I hope I'm saying that correctly. G-U-A-I-L-A. Guayla that Doty heard in a nightclub in East Africa. Sad Girl Walking in the Rain was the result of a week of six sad songs songwriting challenge. That Doty imposed upon himself while touring the UK, writing and recording a song with the word sad in the title every day, but the Sabbath, and posting it on his Patreon feed. Usually it's just one song per week. This guy was like, I'm going to do six. Here's the thing. 
I know Mike Doty a little. I've met him a few times. We're fans of each other's work. I was turned on to him by a friend of mine years ago, and I've loved him ever since. All his albums, they're always interesting. They're always new. He's always trying something. And I think he's a very thoughtful songwriter, but also catchy melodies that are very singable. You'll find yourself singing them around the house, in the car. I can't say enough good things about this guy. Here's your call to action. Get 20% off your order store-wide at MikeDoty.com slash PFT using code PFT and get a new song every week when you go to Patreon.com slash Doty. That is M-I-K-E-D-O-U-G-H-T-Y dot com slash PFT. Use code PFT for store-wide savings. Mike Doty, you can't go wrong, listeners. Okay, look, holiday shopping. It's the worst. But thanks to Movement Watches, all that gift-giving anxiety can disappear with the price of a button. These watches make the perfect purchase for just about anyone in your life. And remember, they only start at $95. You've heard me talk about Movement Watches. I'm sure you got yourself one already because you do what I say. But now, let's finish your holiday shopping and get a movement watch for someone on your list. The holiday shopping season is here, and with movement, you can skip the crowds and standing in crazy line to the mall and find a gift they'll love at prices that beat the department stores. A watch is a nice gift, everybody. It's a nice thing. People are impressed by it. It's a personal item. It's nice. Movement watches start at $95. At a department store, you're normally looking at spending 400 to 500 bucks. This is true, and I won't do it. Movement figured out that by selling online, they're able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Poor Vu. Classic design, quality construction, styled minimum, mi minimalism. Why isn't that word shorter? Over 500,000 watches sold in over 160 countries. That's a pretty good track record, you guys. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash PFT. That's how movement spells movement. mvmtwatches.com slash PFT. Movement sent me a watch. I wear it a ton. People give me compliments on it all the time. Now is the time to step up your watch game. Okay, go to movementwatches.com slash PFT. MVMT watches.com slash pft and join the movement jingle bells Ooh, welcome back spontaneous nation peoples the show continues apace day four we're still in the studio ladies and gentlemen it's time to meet our friends from the land of make pretends sitting kitty corner meow across from me <laughs> This gentleman, come on, you know him, Craig Kakowski. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Fuzzface? Cra <laughs> I do have a beard. I see a recording. guy with a beard, I call him Fuzzface. Oh, you're, you are not uh, PC. Uh, I'm not PC. And I got a beard myself, so it's guys true. with beards so can, you can say, say that it. to yeah, guys exactly. with beards. Come on. I have a beard for uh, Bajillion Dollar Properties, which we're about to start shooting the third season of any day now. Oh, way to get that and in So, there. well... <laughs> <laughs> we last season the, la the first two seasons I had a fake beard a chin beard now you're going real now I'm going real because it was very it was you know extra time to have the beard applied and removed and yeah. then with maintenance of it for the entire day because it would peel and also made eating very difficult <laughs> and I don't care to tell you how much false hair I've accidentally ingested over the course of shooting the show. It's gross. On Drunk History, I have had many beards and mustaches over the years. Oh, yeah. I, I've eaten <laughs> half of them over the course oh, yeah. of the day. Because you're also eating constantly on set because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> there's constantly snacks everywhere. If only that weren't true. It's very hard. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Very Craig, hard how, how are you liking your beard? Uh, you sometimes have a beard. Sometimes you don't. I'd say I have a beard 80% of the time. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah, I think so. 80%. I shave it for drunk history so they can put beards on me. Sure. Ironically enough. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think I prefer to have a beard, though I look younger without it. It's true. And uh, I would I would like to look younger, so I'm, I may shave when I get home today. But it's nice not to shave. That's the thing. Yeah. That's why I keep it. Uh, it's a giant pain in the ass. I know. People only know how hard men have it. Yeah. 
Listen, does We're your- We're mammals. <laughs> That's right. We are mammals. What if animals started shaving? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yep. Yep. Does a bear shave in the woods? What animal do you think is most likely to start shaving? Raccoons, they have those little hands. <laughs> they do, you know. Oh, yeah. They've got opposable thumbs, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a raccoon would love to just wash that razor out in the, in the river. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> scrape it on a rock. Scrape it on a rock. <laughs> you know. Craig, I'm going to look next to you. Okay. And welcome this person back to the show, Jean Villapique. Ah, I did it again oh, with the Jean. Jean. I can't help it. <laughs> Jean, hi. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Great. Very good. Very well. The last time I seen to you was, was it, when was it, would you say? Maybe with Janet here and we. That might have been the last one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. That episode that was just the JVs, it was just Jean Villapique and Janet Varney. That's right. Little Janet Varney, excuse me. And by the way. It's little Janet Varney. It's not lil Janet Varney. Oh, I know what I said, mm-hmm. and don't try to correct it. It's little Janet Varney. Oh. G- <laughs> <laughs> lil sounds so reductive. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> She's a grown little woman. Have you ever read the book Little Women? It's not lil women. <laughs> Jane. That's the cartoon strip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been since last I've seen you? Uh, very good. Very good. Yeah. I don't know. I can never think of what happened, though. I know I've, I had know. A, I've lived a full life, but I could not think of what thing I've done. Are you ready for death? Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, Dang. cool. I mean, I'm not afraid Today. of death. I would like to Are live Are you alone. not? No. I'm real afraid of it. Oh. Uh, yeah. I just want to fall to my death. <laughs> That's how you want to go? Yes. You want to fall to your death. From a very high place. So I can't, I don't experience it happening. I'm just like, this great ride. And it's over. I don't want any pain. I don't want any, ever, any more pain. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I I don't want to die in my sleep or anything. I I would like to just drop off of something. Why don't you want to die in your sleep? Feels like no pain at all. I'd like to have some, I don't know. I'm, I'm you want to know that it's happening. I think I would like a little awareness of like, okay, bye. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. yeah. So you would like to be okay, you would like to know that it's happening, be okay with it, and then die painlessly. Yeah. Is that too much death? I don't think so, Gene. <laughs> and I'll take, consider it taken care of. I, Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> Someone's going to push me. So that's what's been going on since I saw you last. <laughs> planning my death. <laughs> Do you have one of those deals where it's like you've hired someone to push you off a thing and you never know when it's going to happen? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I live every day like it's my last. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> I have a coat problem. <laughs> Does your husband, Brian, have a beard sometimes? Yes. He you- just recently shaved it for the first time in many months. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad. You prefer without. Because for kissing, yeah. I mean, I, oh. I think he looks great with the beard, but it is really annoying for kissing. Yeah. It's very, very annoying. What about your wife, Carla? How's she standing on the beard? Uh, she's okay with beard. She hates just stash. Because her dad has a mustache, and oh. it feels like uh, kissing her dad. That oh. makes sense, because I've kissed him, and guess what? <laughs> it does. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to turn from you to Uh-oh. right next to me. Here it comes. <laughs> Here she goes. <laughs> Here it comes. I think you know who it is. Welcome back, Gary Anthony Williams. Oh, I've had a lot of feelings in my time, but nothing has felt as good as that just felt. Really? And I have felt a lot of things. How many feelings would you say you've seven had? Seven or eight. Seven or eight. Seven or eight. Seven or eight full-blown feelings. Wow. Full frontal feelings. Is, so is this, would this be number eight or nine? This is, no, no. This is, now when I say seven or I've had seven or eight of them. Right. But this is, oh, you mean what number is it What number in of the feelings is this? Yeah. Oh, this is number eight. This is number eight. Okay. This is the last one I've had. And maybe the last one I'm ever going to hold on to. I hope that's... Oh, hold on to. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, speaking of falling, mm. I have a friend who, uh, a friend Hillary, who dated a guy who was a paratrooper. He jumped out of a plane with your little death wish. He hit the ground. <laughs> he did not die. My he walks around. He walks around with a crooked <laughs> neck now. Oh, no. So you need to think. Neck. Yeah, his neck is all like I all cut almost to the die. side. Yeah, but you don't know. When your guy pushes you, you don't know. You may be crooked neck next time you do this show. I might have a lady push me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, that's, hey, oh, Gary. Right, that's right. Ladies, ladies get can the job push done. people. <laughs> no, can't. Ladies can push people from great heights, too. I, had six, I have six sisters. <laughs> My mother was a lady. I never saw one of them push people. My dad, 
push people all the time. My brother Jeff, my brother Mike, push people all the time. Ladies can't push people. And I don't, I don't, I don't care about this political correctness mm. like you anymore. Man, oh Ladies man. can't push I'll people. push people? Bullshit. I'm with her. I <laughs> <laughs> Gary, do you ever have a beard? No, I can't, you know, yeah, and I don't want to make this racial, but it's one of those black guy things where if I try to grow a full beard, mm. the follicles turn back in yeah. and it inflames my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most I can do is the black guy beard, which is like right around the mouth sure. and the chin. And then mm. we shave our heads. Mm. <laughs> That's what and we, then we, we shave, shave our, our heads <laughs> and we get that little thing right around the mouth. Gary, are you a married man? Oh, my God. I'm super married. Dude. How does your wife feel about the facial hair? My wife won't touch my face. Never? No. She's she's not into my face. <laughs> not into my, your face? She's not into it. Did you ever see the movie This Boy's Life starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro? I did not. There, There is a scene. Robert De Niro plays a horrible stepfather to Leonardo DiCaprio, whose mother, Ellen Barkin, has married this monster, mm -hmm. right? Based on the, the memoir of Tobias Wolff. And, uh, oh, <laughs> Melty. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a scene where uh, Ellen Barkin and Robert De Niro are about to have sex, and then um, he wants to only do it uh, from behind because, as he says, I, I don't like the face. I don't like to see the face. Mm. That has haunted me wow. <laughs> forever. I hear you. Forever. I hear you. So anytime I hear someone say the words, the face, uh -huh. that's what I think of. Oh, love that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty good movie. You should go check <laughs> it out. Sounds like a great movie. You should check it out. Robert Nero plays an out an out and out monster. No, let me wow. ask you. He's horrifying in this film. When you were saying that like you shaving your beard makes you look Younger, younger yeah. in face. Do you think like full body? That's true too. Like shave head. Sh like if you shave your full body, do you think they give you that youthful, that whole full body youthful look? Absolutely. It would have to, right? I would, I would think, think so. so. Yeah. Right out of the womb. Body stubble. I don't know. I can't get past the idea of. You don't like the beast stubs? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. She don't like beast stubs. Did you ever see Body Stubble by Brian De Palma? <laughs> Another <I've> horrifying seen... <laughs> film. <laughs> This is the earliest we've ever recorded a spontaneous nation and therefore the punchiest. It's true. That's very true. We're going to do a late night one at some point. See how that goes. Oscar, beard, yes or no? Um, uh, I've had beards and I, I had beards, uh, a beard when I was in uh, doing Shock of the Funny down there. But no, f you know, for work purposes, I, for better or worse, this is kind of the thing. Uh, clean. Uh, I did this. I have a, the audience can't see me. I got a haircut. I love that. For the first very, time in 12 years. Type. Yeah. Yes, where I can. And I went, I, I went to the guy and I said, because I could do whatever now. And mm -hmm. I, and I went, let me, I want to, I want a Rob Lowe haircut. And I started looking for Rob Lowe on the oh, computer. I, I want a Rob Lowe. Wait, but Lowe you didn't even know. Well, hold, but he didn't even know what it looked like. He said, "I started. Look, I no, want the haircut, saw, but then I start looking." I for saw it. him at, at the. I saw him at the roast. He's a handsome man. I saw him at the roast, okay. and I liked the tie. And so I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking to show the guy, and I hear ring, ring, and I look up, and he already had taken the sideburns off. And I'm like, "Holy <laughs> shit! He already started. I hope this is what it is." But you know, I want to talk about for a second because oh, the death thing got. I have been petitioning this. And my wife's not going to do it, but I, the way I want to go, and I think I'm going to have to get my nephews to do it, mm -hmm. is I, <laughs> I want to be uh, catapulted into the ocean like in Malibu, <laughs> right. but just before I'm dead. So I'm like, so I'm like, oh, what a beautiful view. Like I, I could enjoy the view uh -huh. and then land in, in the ocean, die, die and be biodegradable into the ocean. Sure. Back like then. our friend Osama bin Laden. Yes. <laughs> But my wife's like, I'm not going to do that. Previous guest I think of the show. The <laughs> well, friend of the show. Friend oh, he was show. on. He was on. <laughs> friend of the show. Yeah, I didn't know that. They have those catapults from American Gladiator. I bet you could get one of those oh, catapults. I'd love it. Do they put people in those catapults? I, I, I don't actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume. I feel like they have giant, crazy machinery. She right? panicked. <laughs> I, would, I would assume. There's I'm a price for anything. Isn't there a price for anything? Oh, oh that's I would right. catapult you. That's right. I, oh, I, nice. I I really I mean as a friend I would. But well, you're saying that to Gene, who did not request to be catapulted. No, I don't. No, want that. I would catapult everybody in this room. <laughs> Against Gary. their will. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> That's a, is that a thing that I will, I will catapult you? <laughs> I will catapult you. Listen, I don't push people. <laughs> we're all gonna get catapulted. We gotta take a break. Uh, when we return, we will reveal our location for our improv provided to provided to Baba Abogodododo. I'm a big baby. I'm a big baby. Telling you what's happening. 
<laughs> we will reveal our location provided to us by Oscar Nunez. And then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation returns. Harry's Razors. Remember? It's been a while. Harry's, welcome back to me. Harry's Razors are great. It's the holiday season. You got to buy things for people. This is a gift for a man or a woman. These are nice. Like, look, here's the thing. When you can have an everyday thing be a nice thing as well, that's a gift forever. And it seems like finding the right gift for someone can feel impossible. How difficult it is it? How difficult it is. How difficult it is to find something that's a thoughtful gift, but it's also useful slash practical. I myself have Harry's razors. I love the look and feel of it. The razors, the blades themselves are great. They give you a nice, close, clean shave. And they also have things like Harry's has a limited edition shave set that makes a great gift. Special, but practical. It's a beautiful unboxing experience. You open that thing up, you look at it like, oh, this is nice. You can make it personal by getting it engraved. Come on. This is how you should live, everybody. If you haven't heard of them before, Harry's was started by two best friends, Jeff and Andy. They were fed up with being overcharged for razors. So they started their own razor company, an extreme solution. They started this company to give people what they deserve, a great shave at a fair price. This holiday, Harry's is offering a limited edition shaving set, midnight blue chrome razor handle. That sounds nice. Then you can get that engraved with your initials even nicer. Three of Harry's German engineered five blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave, foaming shave cream that smells amazing, a beautifully designed gift box. It goes for 30 bucks on harrys.com. That is a reasonable price for a nice gift. They also offer handles and sets starting at just 10 bucks. If you haven't tried Harry's for yourself. That's the, oh man, if you can do, do shop for a gift for somebody else and you're like, I also should get a gift for me. Listen, free shipping ends on December 9th. So act now, go to harrys.com right this very second to get a limited edition holiday shave set while supplies laughed, laughed at you for not lasting. <laughs> Go to harrys.com right now to get a limited edition holiday shave set while supplies last. And don't forget to enter code PFT at checkout for $5 off. That is harrys.com, code PFT. Guys, I want the best for you. Ho, ho, Harry's. Oh, welcome back to Spontanea Nation, everyone. We didn't go anywhere, and neither did you. It is time for us to do our improv, but first... Just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we have three sound effects that move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene, something's happening the exact same time as that scene, a lateral move in time, a meanwhile, if you will, we'll press this meanwhile button. We're, on this, we're in the same time, just moving side to side. Let's say we need to flash back for some reason. Someone's having a memory or we're learning how something came to be. You will hear this flash back sound effect. Flash back, going back in time. <laughs> That's the jingle for you to remember it. <laughs> Can you do that one more time? So flash can... back, going back, back in time. In time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can all, I think we can really nail it on this take. Ready? And here we go. Flash, flash back, back, going back, back in time. time. <laughs> like, somehow it got worse. <laughs> but listen, you can't live in the past forever. So let's say we need to return to the present day or travel to the mysterious future. You will hear this flash forward sound effect. Gonna get back to the future. Gonna, Gonna get back to the future. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Now that you know that <laughs> shut up and listen everyone has everyone in the room has the ability to touch these sound effects at any time I'm, am i am i in this or do i <laughs> should i just watch you are as in this as you would so like jump, to be jumping okay if you no, tell me what oh, to do don't give me a if you're feeling froggy just jump oh yeah <laughs> oh man he about to catapult you okay. boy he about to do it okay <laughs> 
All right. Memes. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay. wel- you're welcome. I, Oscar, at this point, I formally extend the invitation for you to join the improv. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> All never, right. Never did that to Matt Besser. Here we go. No, I sure didn't, right? <laughs> that was my mistake. <laughs> I forgot to have the trumpet sound and the scroll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to reveal our location provided to us by Oscar Nunez, and that location is East New York City Village. East New York City Village. We take you now to East New York City Village. I feel like there used to be a bagel shop here at 2nd and 12th. Wait, wait, where's that bagel shop gone? What do you want to say, bagel 2nd and 12th? The bagel show is still over here. Still over here, second and twelfth. And yeah, what happened to the sign, though? The sign's over here. I took the sign away years ago, Charlie. Years ago. Oh, okay. Because I feel like a bagel. I feel like a bagel with some schmear, you know? I tell you what, I gotta I, I, I got admit to you, I'm hungry as well. Hey, hey, hey lady! Lady! <laughs> Yeah, 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 this one. Yeah, yeah, you, you, the lady. Me? Yeah. Oh, hey, Vinny, you oh, can't do one. that. You can't just yell at a lady these days. Across the street, I can't. No, There's you two can't. of us. Hey, which one? You, the lady who's talking. The oh, one who's I asking. guess you're not a lady, Eleanor. Yeah, because yeah, you're standing in front of me. You're always so tall. Oh, Cynthia, you're always the tall one. I'm not going to stop being tall, Eleanor. It's my thing. Uh, even in the East Village, you Cynthia, listen to me. All right. I'm your father, of course. You know that to be true. Today is the day I die, Cynthia. Oh, my God. Pops. No, no, no. It's all been planned out. What? At three o'clock, your brother is going to push me into a catapult, and I will die. But before that, just know this. Someday, someone's going to ask you to stop being tall. Don't do it, Cynthia. You keep growing. You keep your height. But, but Pop, oh my gosh, it's 228, Pop, Pop, Pop. Hey, Pop, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I was a, a little bit late. You ready? Yeah, wait, yeah. wait, right. what if I don't want to be tall, Pop? Don't die, wait. It's Cynthia, too- I got to do this before he dies. Well, how come you didn't tell me you were going to kill Pop? It was between me and Pop. Oh, man. Come on, Cynthia. Yeah. I understand now. I understand everything. And that's why you always give me the stuff to carry around, so I hunch over. I get it. <laughs> Eleanor, you've always been carrying stuff. That's your thing. <laughs> Put more on. Put oh, more on. Eleanor, I can carry more. Eleanor, what is this crazy dream you have of carrying stuff all the time? I want to get into the book, Papa. The Guinness World Book of Records. It's my only way out of this dump. Well, can't you just, uh, you and your twin sister, gain a bunch of weight and sit on little motorcycles and get in that way? It's, uh, it's, it's so hard to do that, Pop. Me with my thick calves. Uh-uh, it's carrying for me, Pops. It's carrying for me through uh, another hey, cinder Pop, block. If, uh, if you're ready, the catapult's all set up for you. Oh, uh, thanks, Junior. All right, well, listen, today's Eleanor. Today's the day? I want you to, today's the day. Uh, I, I'm sp- I sped it up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, what's, the, what's the point of waiting around? Right. Listen, honey. When you go into this life, if carrying things is what you want to do, you oh. do it. And don't let anybody tell you different. Oh, Papa. But listen, try to just be as tall as you can be while you're carrying things. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Carrying tends to hunt you over, but I don't know. You may end up with a tall friend. Papa, can I pull the lever? That's man's business, honey. Oh. <laughs> wow, there's so many of our fathers in the East River. Just <laughs> catapulted one after the other. Splish, splash. Uh, what, in, what an interesting pair we got here. We got a real tall drink of water, and we got a lady who's hunched over. It's Charlie, nice. I thought we'd never seen nothing like this before. This is nice. Yeah, it's New York. I guess you see everything. <laughs> you do, except for the sign for the bagel place. Hey! Right? hey. By the boom. <laughs> you don't look like you live here right now, though. What are you, back to your old haunts or something? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I moved to Arkansas years ago. Whoa! <laughs> Arkansas? What's they even there? Listen. I gotta tell you something. Stuff's about to blow up, okay? Okay, I'm, Bill Clinton. I'm gonna be... You don't have to say my full name. I'm just... Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I know. You got such star power. You've been, <laughs> A lot of people tell me that. I'm not even thin yet. Wait till I am. Listen... 
I'm going to be leaving here soon to go be the president of the United States. Now, that's a big job. It's kind of a promotion. Congratulations, Bill Clinton. Yeah, well, I did so well as governor. People are like, you're great. You you should be the president. And I'm like, all right, I'd rather just be the governor of Arkansas. But this is how it is, okay? I need you to do me a favor. Yes, sir. Eventually, I need you to go to New York. I need I'm, you to find— what? I'm from New York. Yeah, no, I, I need you to go back. Okay. I need you to recover my fountain pen. All right? On a trip to New York, I went to this bagel shop. I was signing the receipt. I left my pen on the counter. By the time I got back to Arkansas, it was too late. I realized my pen was gone. And this pen's, like, really important to you? This is, like, this is a while ago. Well, it's a fountain pen. I mean, okay. you know. Oh, yeah, a high-quality like pen. Yeah, yeah, it was like a Bic or whatever. I wouldn't worry about it. But it's like, I paid money for this pen. You know what I'm saying? I need you to retrieve that fountain pen no matter how long it takes, okay? And eventually get that fountain pen back to me. Bill Clinton, I will do that for you. You promise? I promise, Bill Clinton. I'm doing my thumb thing. <laughs> I'm hey, wanna... Charlie, you kind of zoned out there for a little bit. What's going on? Uh, sorry, just a flashback to the early 90s. <laughs> I got an assignment. An assignment from my boss, Bill Clinton. <gasps> Hey, Bill Clinton. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like to brag about it, but yeah, I work for the Clintons. Yeah, the, 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 the guy, right? He used to be the president. That guy. Yeah, Vinny. Yeah, guys, forget. You know who I'm talking about. Okay. His wife is president now. Right, right. Yeah, maybe, the guy. Maybe. Eleanor, you carried their bags once when they came and stayed at the plaza. I did. Can you lift me up? Lift me up so I can talk oh, to the sorry. Here you go. Uh, hey, fellas. This is Eleanor. Oh, good. It's good to look you in the eye. Um, I carried his bags once. I, I'm a carrier, see? And I carried his bags, and I carried... Hey, would you mind uh, taking these bags up to the room? Just throw, up, throw it up on my back. <laughs> hey, uh, what are you doing later after you uh, drop the bags off? You got any plans? Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> God damn it, Bill, I'm right here. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, forget it, forget it. Sorry. He has no shame. It's true. I don't. I medically don't. He's virile, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Clinton, step into my office, please. Sure. I've been looking over your x-rays. <laughs> what, what, how's it looking, Doc? No, it's looking fairly decent. You, you, oh, good. The incredible power in your lower body, but uh, you're miss <laughs> genetically you're missing a gene. Oh, what, what's the that? The shame gene. Oh, no. You, you literally, L-I-T-R-A-L-L-E-Y, you literally... Have no shame. L I T R A L L E Y. R A L L E Y. Yes. I literally have no shame. You have none at all. Is there anything that can be done about this or no. should be done about this? I wish there were. I wish there were. I can't get a shame no, transplant? No, no, no. You can't. I, like, literally. You, Has that ever been tried? Not with my, <laughs> I'm afraid the results are not, uh, not positive. Um, we were not able to transplant uh, the shame of this other patient into you. What are you telling me? Well, as a result, not only do you still have no shame. Yes, yes. yes. The patient, uh, the, the donor, yes. has even more shame than they need to have. Oh, it's almost like that thing where if someone loves you, then you love them twice as hard. The Hell's Angels rules. Yes, the yes. Hell's Angels rules, yes. So what we have done is a sort of Hell's Angels reverse transplant where uh, the absence of shame is yes. somehow translated into even more shame in the donor. Are we done with this because i got to get on my bike and get out of here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Curly. Your service is uh, very much appreciated. All right, I'm off to Altamont. Uh, listen, <laughs> you may do some things uh, in your life and you may feel bad about them. You're going to feel... Twice as bad about them now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, Curly. Good luck to you. Eleanor, I gotta put you down. My shoulders are killing me. How about you stand in front of me a little bit, huh? All right. It was nice being up here in the rarefied air, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> Charlie, whole point is you're still looking for this bagel joint. Yeah, I gotta get Bill Clinton's fountain pen. He left this. Trying to get the tall lady to move out of the way to see if that's the door the bagel joint is. Excuse me, would you mind stepping aside for a second? All right, a lady's gotta. All right, to stand on the corner beside. Look out for that bird! Oh! oh. <laughs> 
excuse me, I gotta go fix my hairstyle. <laughs> hey, your hairstyle's fine the way it is. Thanks, Charlie. I, I think I got a wing in it. <laughs> okay, look. This, what does it say? 229 12th Street. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be the bagel shop. Yeah, let's step inside and see then, huh? Let's step inside and see. Oh, hello. Are you looking to have bagels? Yeah, I'd like a bagel. Mm. My Charlie, my friend Charlie's got some else on his mind, oh, yeah. Excuse me, are you familiar with the politician Bill Clinton? <laughs> or William Jefferson Clinton? Yeah, you know the guy. He's the guy, right? The first gentleman? The something guy. The what? The thumb thing, you know. Oh, he does the he thumb like he's thing. he's holding the Jeopardy thing. That's right, but he's got nothing in his hand. It's nah. just a phantom Jeopardy <laughs> buzzer in. About 25 years ago, he was here. Uh, he got a uh, got an everything bagel with Schmier. Oh, I remember him. <laughs> you do? I remember everyone by, the, by that bagel order. <laughs> Hurry up, Mac. Hurry up. Go ahead and order, Some please. Some of us are uh, waiting. Hurry up, friend. All right, what do you have? Go shot. ahead, bi order Bill. <laughs> order like, order your on. damn bagel, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to order something. Uh, I'll have a everything bagel and uh, anything on that. Uh, let's see. Got uh, locks. Oh, it's your paper uh, Come on, buddy. buddy. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just get it He's with an out-of-towner. He's an out-of-towner. Oh. Oh, I'm not from here. I'm sorry. Just get it with schmear, Bill. Uh, with schmear. All right, here you go. I'll never forget it. <laughs> And I never did. He took a long time to order and people got upset. Papa. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's my little one. Hey, Papa, checking my homework. <laughs> checking my homework, Papa. I do it. I do it. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Okay, addition. Okay. Is, looks good. Hey, Mr. I appreciate your love for your daughter, but my friend Charlie is in a rush. Hey, Papa, it's okay? It's okay. Hey, correct. With a special pen you gave me. That's Whoa. right. Now go, go get in your box. I'll take the pen. <laughs> okay. Well, you're, you're quite an elderly man to have such a young daughter. I'm lucky. I'm blessed. I'm on my fifth wife. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. A very virile. Look, I don't know if you remember, but Mr. Clinton left a fountain pen here. And it's very important to him. Oh, so important that 25 years later, he needs this pen in the Oval Office. Like a fancy, nice pen? Yeah, it's a nice pen. Well, almost like the pen that I use to grade my daughter's, my little daughter's uh, homework papers. That very pen that you're holding in your hand right now. Hey, he knows it's Bill Clinton's pen. He's holding on to it. I admit no such thing. This is just a nice pen that I've had for quite some time. Oh, say what? the word, Charlie. Say the word, and I'll take him out and get your pen. <laughs> yeah, you remembered that bagel so well, but you forgot the pen? I don't think so. Vinny, grab the pen. So, ma'am, I sit down, please sit down in oh, my chair. Thank you. Oh, your hair, it is uh, an interesting style you've made in it. Thanks a lot. I, um, I've got a, a bit of pigeon feather in the back, yes. and uh, this is a talon. I certainly hope you're not expecting that I would take that out. I'm going to leave that in. Have well, you seen Rob? Let me show you a picture of Rob Lowe's new hairstyle, first of all. Oh, Rob Lowe has no body hair. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Oh, he's oh he doesn't. He looks oh. like a Ken doll with, 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 with darker hair and no Malibu car and all that, but oh, God. I'm just saying, all the guys are coming in looking for the Rob Lowe, but I think the ladies are going to want what you have. Hey, oh, uh, hey, take it. your pen. Hey. How, how dare you, sir? How dare you hold on to the first gentleman's fountain pen for all these years. He left it here. What was I supposed to do? What were you supposed to do? You stole it. What were you supposed to do? Look at all these pens back there. Hey. He's got all sorts of pens back there. Hey, hold on a second, Baba. tall lady. Baba, I came back. Where did, where did you go a second ago? <laughs> so maybe I ran across the street to the hairdressers with no signs. Look so a lady has a right to run across the street. Look at that nice new haircut there. Come on. <laughs> Wait, what is it, honey? Baba, Esmeralda, my little one. I came back from my pen. My pen. My little Where is one, it? my little Where Esmeralda, is it? she's just six years old, came back there, there, honey, there, there. Oh. She came back Where for her wonderful it? pen. Hey, hey, kid, it's all right. Uh, you know, you, you, your father stole this pen. Uh, 
Uh, it, well, I don't know if he stole it, but he, it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to someone else. I'm sorry, kid. Hey, stop crying My here. My father's a thief? I'm gonna catapult myself, Daddy! No, no, don't let him do it! Don't let him do it! Stop it! Somebody stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Look, I have a new design for this catapult. It's not made for adults. It seems quite small for a catapult. Yes, it is. It's for children who realize they've seen everything they've needed to see, and it's time to end it all. Oh, we've been meaning to corner that market. Oh, suicidal children, right. Brilliant. I don't know if it's brilliant, and it feels wrong. It's now all the rage in Tokyo. I mean, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Why did I ever oh, buy that thing? You're a monster, a thief, and you're letting your daughter end her own life. Well, the guy said, uh, you know, he's trying to sell it to me. He's like, uh, you know, uh, you, you buy this catapult. It's, it's only $5. It's and pink. He's I like, like it. It's pink. And it's pink. It's great for girls. Before I know it, I gave him $15 for the thing. Charlie. Oh. Hey, Charlie, I thought the door. Isn't that him? Isn't that the guy? The, the uh, Clinton guy? I thought the door. Charlie. Huh? Oh, what are they talking about in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks That's just like it. Is that it? Yeah, it's him, it's him, it's him! <laughs> well, everyone's really yelling a lot. I like him! Oh my god! Oh my god. Like him. Let's let him identify the pen! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go in. Hey, come on! Oh, look, here he is! Hey, everybody! Charlie. Hey, Mr. Clinton! Oh, oh, President! Mr. Clinton, Mr. Clinton! Thumb thing to you, thumb thing to you. Oh, thumb yeah, thing. right thing. Thumb yeah. thing to you, thumb thing. Mr. Clinton, I don't know if you remember me. I worked for you about 25 years ago. Uh, oh, yeah, back in uh, Little Rock. Uh, your name is. Uh, yes, Charlie. His name is Charlie, Mr. Clinton. Charlie. Yes, yeah. Charlie, great to see you again. Well, I thought you remembered everybody you ever met. I, well, isn't that the proof? I just called well, you Charlie. Well, you needed the name for that. That was just there. a coincidence. Okay. Listen, how's that pen thing coming along? Well, it, what a coincidence that we both showed up on the same day. The, this is your pen, sir. Wait a minute. Is this this is the bagel shop? It is. That where I had the everything bagel with the schmear? Yeah, he took yeah. the sign down. Well, 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 look who it is. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's me, the bagel guy from the bagel shop. <laughs> no, I know. I realize now I'm in the bagel shop. That's right. Oh, you left your pen. Oh, thank you very much. So I guess it was just a misunderstanding. This guy was going to return my pen all along. Charlie, I, I, I feel think, like you failed me. I've been using it, Mr. Clinton. Oh, who's this little girl? I'm the daughter. I'm six You're years old. You're the daughter? I'm six years old. <laughs> What's your name, honey? Oh, uh, my name is Plotz. <laughs> it's what? Plotzy. People call me Plotzy. <laughs> oh, it's a little nickname. Yeah. This is Esmeralda, my daughter. We call her Plotzy. Call where, where do you get Plotzy? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You guys can't leave here with your daughter. You cannot leave the hospital until you decide on a name for her. Well, I like Esmeralda. And I like Plesmeralda. <laughs> so we can't get past this. I know I'm your fifth wife. I don't want there to be a sixth. Uh, darling, I think you know there's probably going to be a sixth wife. It's just, uh, it's just who I am. I feel like if we pick the right name, we'll stay married. I tell you what. Let's name her Esmeralda, but call a pl not Plesmeralda. That's confusing. Legally, her name is Esmeralda. Let's hurry this up. I got to get in my Pilates class. Oh, huh? I got it. Huh? <laughs> this is Plotsy. I don't mind. Plotsy, what are you doing in that pink catapult? I was gonna catapult myself into the into the Hudson River, East River for adults, Hudson for children and women <laughs> and women, but. I've been using your fountain pen, President Clinton, all these many years. I haven't lost my accent, and I love your fountain pen. Thank you so much. Wow. I don't know how I could take this pen back at this point if little Plotsy has been using it. Uh, sir, we really should get to your speaking engagement. No, I, I know, Jeff, but listen, I got to... I got to deal with these people, and uh, it's going to take a long time. And Jeff, make sure that the president gets to the speaking engagement. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. What's up, what's up with this team of Hell's Angels that are protecting the first gentleman? <laughs> Secret Service protects the president. That's right. Hell's Angels protect the first gentleman. Rules are rules. It's right there in the Constitution. Well, what an honor it is to have all of you here in my bagel shop. Uh, uh, we don't get much business here since the sign came down. Well, how about a free round of bagels since the president's here and all? Uh, what's that? I, I mean, I, I think it would be nice. What'd you say, though? If you 
gave us all a complimentary bagel. Oh, complimentary bagel. Um, that's interesting. I just told you the business has not been so great. There's a thing in the Hells Angels, right? If someone gives you one thing, you give them two things. Oh, all right. So you all have given me nothing, and yet you all want free bagels. But if you give us all free bagels, you're going to get four back from these two guys, and then you'll be down just two bagels. Is, so is I, that... I did the math. She's right, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Plotsy. Is this true? You gentlemen will go out to another bagel shop and get me four bagels and bring them back here? That's the code of the angels, man. All right. Well, uh, here we go, everyone. Here's, here's your bagels. Uh, enjoy. Would anyone like anything on there? I think you know what I'd like. <laughs> A schmear. Hey, Charlie, you're right. He's just like you said he was. Would I lie to you, Vinny? Come on, Mr. President, you're the best. Thank you. Thank Mr. you all. Mr. President, my friend is outside somewhere. You probably just missed her because she's very short and hot. Oh, he's she's, ca- she's carrying a lot of stuff? Yeah, her name's Eleanor. I, I, she oh, would, no, I remember Eleanor from the time I stayed at the hotel. Oh, see, he does remember everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember half of everybody. Let's put it that way. Oh, is that lewd? <laughs> it's a little lewd, yeah. <sighs> I think he's saying he just remembers the ladies. I'm just having, yeah, that's, thanks, Or maybe he only remembers half of people's bodies. (laughs) Just the face, I hope. I either remember, I I don't like the face. (laughs) And it all happened at a place called East New York City Village. (laughs) Craig Kikowski, where can people find you? Should they wish to find you? What would you like to promote? Oh, at Kikowski on Twitter. Also, Craigslist PCAST uh, on Twitter. Uh, that's the handle for my podcast, Craigslist, in which I count down my 100 favorite movies and make my wife, who may or may not want to watch these movies, watch these movies mm. and talk about them. That's right. It is a wonderful podcast that I'm enjoying greatly. We just I, had you as a guest. I got to guest on the show when we did uh, Lenny. The, Lenny. The Bob Fosse film starring Dustin Hoffman Fosse. and Valerie Perrine. Fosse. Perrine. Uh, but I highly recommend that podcast. Thank you, Thank Paul. you for having me as a guest. It was great to have you. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, you said your Twitter shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jean Villapique. Uh You can Google my last name, Villapeak, V-I-L-L-E-P-I-Q-U-E, and I have Twitter and uh, Instagram and stuff, and I also have a blog uh, called Griefing uh, on WordPress. Yes, which, is, which is wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. Highly recommended. Thank you. Uh, shows in town? Uh, uh, I believe in January we'll be starting up Quartet again with uh, Craig Kikowski, Bob Dassey, and Jack McBrayer. January. Chow, 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 chow. Zing. <laughs> and uh, uh, Friday nights at UCB Franklin. The soundtrack is at uh, 9.30. There we go. Yes. Gary Anthony Williams. The tallest man in town. <laughs> I thought uh, I... No. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, at Gary A... I think I'm at Gary A. Williams. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah but I have. I used are. to have another one, and it's crap. At Gary A. Williams <laughs> on the Twitters, uh, the black version, uh, the black version. Check that out when you are looking for some live improv comedy mm-hmm. with all black people. There you go. <laughs> if you're in the market, if you're in that specific market, yep. you know where to go. You know. That is monthly at Largo at the Coronet right uh-huh. here We took Angeles. a little break, but yeah, by the time this show is on the air, we there will be go. back monthly. And Absolutely. better than ever, I dare say. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Eben Schletter. You can find him at ebenschletter.com. He is Eben Schletter on all the platforms. Seek out Eben Schletter's non-spontaneous nation work because it is terrific. And why is it terrific? Well, because Eben Schletter is only the best. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see Eben and myself at Largo Saturday, December 3rd and Sunday, December 4th. We are doing a special benefit show. Um, it's a night of music, of cover songs with some of our favorite musical guests that we've had on our various variety shows over the years. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Great band, great guests. Please do come and see that. Tickets are available at pauleftompkins.com slash live and the 100th episode Recording of Spontaneous Nation will happen live at Largo Saturday, sep- Saturday, January seventh, two thousand seventeen. September's not in there, guys. Wow. <laughs> That's not t- for another nine months uh, after the recording. God damn it! <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, he's melting down. I'm guys. Melting, down. melting down. I'm having a Twitter <laughs> meltdown. <laughs> They don't just happen on Twitter. I'm having I'm having a real life Twitter meltdown. 
Um, thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. Hello, I'm John Lennon, and I'm simply having a wonderful Christmas time with all my new Earwolf merch. Just look at what Earwolf added to their store this year. Make your friends jealous, guys, with the brand new Earwolf activity book. Go on a magical mystery tour in your Hello from the Magic Tavern t-shirt. Shake it up, baby, with the longest, shortest time baby onesie. And there's gear from Comedy Bang Bang, How Did This Get Made, and so much more. Imagine all the deals. Go to store.earwolf.com today and use the promo code HOHO to get 15% off your purchase if you order by December 10th. Pick up a great gift for the podcast fan in your life this holiday season. Drums. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 